What's up everybody, this is Corbin. I'm a wannabe DIYer. I have a full-time desk job, but I DIY on the weekend. In today's video, I am gonna be going over how to build a board and batten wall. Um, the one that you see right now, uh, I just helped a couple friends build this inside of their house. They just bought this beautiful home and have this massive wall. This, this wall is almost 20 feet tall and uh, 20 feet wide. So it was a big wall to cover. I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step how we did uh, the board and batten on there. Total, this cost them just under, I think they said they spent about $300 in supplies. So if you have a smaller wall, you can do something like this for you know $200, uh, maybe even $100. Um, I'll link up all the supplies that I use down below and I'll kind of go through everything, uh, everything, all the tools and all that stuff. So let's jump right in. Supplies, you're gonna need some liquid nails, some paintable caulk, and some spackle. These are the ones that I use. I'll link them down below. For wood, I prefer the MDF board just because it makes it easy to prime and paint. And we went with a one by six by eight, but you can use any size that you would like. For tools, it does help to have a brad nailer. This is the one that I prefer. It's made by Ryobi. It doesn't have a compressor. It's just fully battery operated. We'll need something to sand with. I use an orbital sander. And you will need either a circular saw or a miter saw to cut the wood. And I'll link everything down below. And here's what the wall looked like before, as you can tell, just a big kind of bare wall that we were working with. We started off just by applying liquid nails on the back of the boards and worked on the edges first, as you can see here in this video. The height of this wall did call for a lot of climbing and we had to get creative with uh, getting the boards up there. But we put the liquid nails on and then go back and hit them with the brad nailer. And I can't speak highly enough of this brad nailer. It really does make the job clean and easy, um, less nail holes, and you don't have to worry about a loud compressor. Once we had the outside edges done, it was time to get the vertical um, middle pieces up. So we made sure to have a level handy as we built these all the way to the very top. We tried to spackle while we were up on top of the ladders just because it was a pain to climb up and down them. Next we went and cut sections for each of the boxes that we were going to be making. As you can see for this one it was a little bit trickier. We had to have both of us hold it and then one of us hold the level and the nail gun. Uh, it was kind of tricky. We had to definitely have some teamwork here but it worked out. Here you see us taking a tape measure and marking the bottom section where we want those boards to line up. So we just marked 67 inches on each of those sections to make sure that everything was level. Once we had those all measured out, we put liquid nails on the back of the boards, uh, did a quick dry fit, made sure it was level, and then hit it with the brad nailer. And then we just repeated this process for the rest of the wall. Here you can see me putting the, brad, or the liquid nails on the back of the board. I just use a caulk gun to put it on there. As you are doing this, it is important to have a kind of a wet rag handy just in case you do have uh, liquid nails squeeze out. On the actual wall, you can wipe it down real quick. And then here we are giving it the final kind of uh, level check to make sure that everything lines up. Make sure that you are doing this constantly throughout the wall because if not, it can really end up looking funny. Once we got all the boards up, now it was on to kind of the tedious part, which was spackling all of the joints where the boards hit up against each other and uh, caulking the, the border. And I'll show you a closer look of what that looks like, but this can be kind of tedious. It's a lot of spackling and sanding and just making sure that everything looks clean and professional. Okay, so now that we got the boards up, um, one of the most important steps is making sure you spackle wherever a board meets another board on these joints. So we just went through with this spackle over here. Um, it's um, Drydex. 
Uh, it goes on pink, so I know it looks horrible when you first put it on, but it ends up looking really nice because it dries white. Um, so you're going to want to do this, repeat this process until it looks like it's basically one continuous board. Um, once this dries, it, you can see it's starting to dry here white. We'll sand it down and then probably put another layer on it. Um, and then right here, as you can see, we went through and caulked these joints um, so that it looks like it's almost it's basically attached to the wall. Um, I'll show you one that hasn't been caulked yet and you can see what it looks like. Sorry. Um, so right here, you see this gap right here. So we haven't caulked here yet. Um, after we're done caulking, it will end up looking like this. So it's just nice and continuous and makes it look clean and professional. So don't forget to spackle and caulk when you're building walls like these. Um, it really makes all the difference up here. Right there, that's a spot you can see that we haven't spackled yet. And clearly you can see where the cut is at. So we'll get to that. And here's what it looked like after we got the spackle on. You can see some of the pink and stuff still on there. Now it was time to sand. And here's what it looked like after we were done sanding. You can see it's not perfect, but once you paint it, it's pretty much invisible to see those pieces. Here's one that we haven't sanded yet. We did go through and use a blow dryer just to speed up the drying process, uh, just to save time. So all that's left now is to get the paint on. We've gotten everything sanded down. We've got these joints all flattened out, ready to paint. Um, down the interior, as you can see, we cut these at a 45 degree angle, um, so they don't really hang under the baseboards. Um, we're gonna obviously go through and paint this um, and you really won't be able to notice um, them hanging over that. So here's what it looked like before and here's what it looked like after we got done painting. For painting, we did only paint the boards themselves. The wall did not need to be painted because we kept it the same color. So the height of this wall definitely made it a challenge, but besides this, that, this is definitely a beginner-friendly DIY project, something that you could definitely tackle and do um, in a few days. That's how long it took us. I think total this project took us um, just, just about 10 hours, so and we split that up between two days. But if it's a smaller wall, you could definitely do this in a couple hours, well not a couple hours, maybe two or three hours, four hours, <laughs> something like that, um, but definitely doable. But hope you enjoyed the video, we'll see you guys next time.